Well, the significance of using Geomagic software is uh, quite apparent in that once we uh, did the laser scanning, we have the cloud of points. Now what are you going to do with it? So we uh, were able to contact the appropriate people at Geomagic and uh, Ping Fu came right back with us and says, what do you need and how can I help? The help, the support that we got from Geomagic was outstanding and we really appreciated that. Back in the 80s, uh, when I was uh, racing at the Bonneville Salt Flats and I raced a couple of different types of cars, uh, still the pinnacle of land speed racing, realistically, is the thrust-powered, unlimited category. Even though I had run roadsters and lakesters and so on, I kind of had a, a, a feel that it would be wonderful to be able to step up and, and uh, go after the big record. Along came the British in 1983. They set the record at uh, 634 miles an hour. And then they turned around and campaigned a car called the Thrust SSC. In 1997, they uh, brought the record clear up to 763 miles an hour. Uh, it just seemed like there was no one in America that was stepping up to that challenge. And I guess it was one of those, maybe my ego was bigger <laughs> than, uh, you know, than reality, but I thought, you know, I, I have some ideas. So uh, my business partner, uh, Keith Zengi, and I, uh, we kind of teamed up, shook hands on the idea of, of taking an F-104 Starfighter and converting it into a car. One of the major problems with uh, the idea was finding an F-104 Starfighter. Uh, most of those had been sent to the scrap heap. There are a few around the country that are sitting on pedestals out in front of museums. Uh, and we knew that there were some that were imported from foreign countries. I didn't know at the time that his tail number was 763, which happens incidentally to match the uh, land speed record. But what I did find was that this thing was available for about $25,000 and a little shipping costs and so on. I could get this thing home for about $30,000. In the process of cleaning it up, I found the tail number uh, etched in the, uh, the, the fuselage and it was FG763. I matched that information to the uh, uh, data plate number, sent that information to the Air Force and they came back with the history of the aircraft. I have pictures of it flying with the X-15, the X-B-70, the uh, SR-71s in the development stages. So uh, we're very, very glad to have this piece of history. The thing about it now is we don't dare wreck it. <laughs> that would be a, a really bad thing. Well, the challenges that we have met through the years of developing the vehicle uh, started, of course, with restructuring it because there was a lot of damage. Uh, there were panels that were punched through. There were pieces of ribs and lingerons and so on that were broken and, and uh, so on. Uh, not to mention just you know the, the overall look of the thing with the canopy smashed and everything. So starting with the restructuring, that took a lot of skill. And fortunately, we do have people on the team, such as my son, who's a structural person with Boeing. And so he knew how to drill holes and put in rivets. And uh, we, we uh, found pieces and, and, and parts and some things we made on our own just to restructure the thing so it had some integrity. The next part of it was finding a lot of parts that we needed, such as the canopies and, and other missing panels. And so we had to go on a search all over the country to find those. And fortunately, there were pieces to be found uh, through a network of, of uh, aviation people. The, uh, the next phase then was getting into how to convert it from an airplane into a car. So then that took a lot of imagination. And some ideas come to you at 2 o'clock in the morning, such as how to do, you know, build a suspension and you know, a lot of different ideas. Uh, so we started with it, you know, piece by piece. First of all, building the suspension and then uh, you, know, you have to figure out how to, how to not only suspend it but then how to create, uh, you know, like how to steer it and, and uh, how to keep it on the ground. So where do you place the canards to con you know, create downforce? How do you build a suspension in the back that will uh, take the kind of a beating that it's going to take? Uh, then you have to look into how are you going to design the parachutes? How are you going to uh, uh, rebuild an engine uh, from uh, a pile of parts? And you know, where do you find the people to, to, to help you with that? So it has taken a lot of time, but as we've grown the project and we bring in more and more volunteers, uh, they come in with the, the base of skills that we need. So we do have everything from welders and school teachers and truck drivers and engine mechanics and uh, aeronautical engineers. So uh, we've just built the base, uh, not only the, the vehicle, but the team as well. 
And uh, that's how we've, we've really uh, reached this point where we're uh, ready to run after the record. Now one of the other era, uh, ways that, that people can get involved with us is uh, donations. We have a website, you can go right on the website and donate. Uh, if it's five dollars or even at one dollar, uh, after a while it adds up and it helps us pay those expenses. And uh, make this an American project and you know, help us uh, by donating. Some of the technologies we're using on this as we have developed uh, the, the process and gone through the testing to verify all the electromechanical things that are working, now we had to, to start looking at uh, how, how reliably fast can we run. Some of that has to be done by computer analysis. So we started off in that phase of it by doing the uh, laser scanning of the entire fuselage. So using a combination of uh, capture 3D products, uh, uh, ferro arms and so on, we uh, you know, did all the uh, accumulation of, of uh, points. And then we had to figure out how to uh, get that merged into our uh, other software products. Uh, we found that the, the only company that uh, stepped up to help us was Geomagic and they came up with the software that would allow us to uh, convert all the cloud of points into uh, surfaces. Without that we were just you know, basically back where we were before with no idea what to do next other than you know, the old-fashioned way with uh, slide rules and drafting cables. Well the significance of using Geomagic software is uh, quite apparent in that once we uh, did the laser scanning we have the cloud of points, now what are you going to do with it? Well uh, fortunately the, the people that uh, we work with at Boeing uh, are familiar with the Geomagic uh, product and uh, so we uh, were able to contact the appropriate people at Geomagic and uh, Ping Fu came right back with us and says what do you need and how can I help? So the cooperation was outstanding and so uh, a, a team of people from Geomagic got involved with this and uh, started the process of converting that cloud of points into surfaces. So now we can take that data and we can plug it into our other software products such as Dassault System software, uh, CATIA V5 that we're using. We uh, can use that uh, same data now to uh, plug into other software programs so we can run our CFD analysis. So it, it turns into a, a product now that is usable in, in many avenues. So uh, the help, the support that we got from Geomagic was outstanding and we really appreciated that. In the, the, this era of technology and you know, having to step up to the, the uh, demands of going to speeds that we're looking at, it was necessary for us to use uh, really high-end software to get the job done. We've reached a point where we're now in the home stretch and uh, like I tell the team, we're, we've, if you've ever run in track, you know, you've turned the last quarter, uh, uh, you've, you're looking down the straightaway past that quarter pole and uh, you see the finish line. Uh, I think one of the, the best analogies I use is back when I used to run in track and I ran the 400 meters, that last section down the straightaway was the hardest part because now you've exhausted all this that you've done in the past and now you have to find the strength and the uh, initiative to complete the job. And that's where we are. We've, uh, after uh, 12 years and 30 test runs, we're ready to, to uh, turn that last quarter and go down the straightaway. So uh, over the next year, we have uh, our next phase of testing, which will validate the data uh, up to about 600 miles an hour. And so we'll match our computer analysis to uh, actuals. Then uh, we're looking at October of this year hopefully going out to run over 700 miles an hour and that'll take us into the area where we're really bucking up against this, the sound barrier. That's a whole new set of issues that we have to uh, understand and, uh, and obviously uh, mitigate any risks. Uh, once we accomplish that we're pretty much set to set a date for when we're going to go after the record. We're hopefully we're going to run uh, for the record in the summer of 2012. Once we set the record, we expect to do a, a tour. Uh, we have outstanding invitations to do uh, various air shows that are such as Oshkosh, which is the, one of the largest air shows, the Paris Air Show. Uh, we've been invited to the New York Auto Show, which is also a very significant auto show. Uh, so we have opportunities to take the vehicle around and show it to the world. Uh, in addition to that, we've had several museums that want the car 
and so we'll, we may be negotiating something in that arena. Uh, at this point in time, that's kind of far off, but uh, we expect to spend a lot of time on the road after the fact and show the car off.